Just let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, yes, we can. We can. Thank you for that, Emanuela. I'll be sharing a paper by Abdul and his colleagues on our control of snake bite and venomin. And this paper has been published. Uh, and it's a mathematical uh, modeling approach on snake bites. So to start us off, uh, there's, no, there's not much that has been done with regards to applying mathematical modeling on snake bites. And I've been working on snake bite for five years now. Then my master's was in medical statistics, and I thought, why not uh, apply this tool that I'm passionate about on snake bite, so and see if I can advance the understanding of the dynamic modeling of snake bite, or the dynamics of snake bite. Yeah, my name is Robert Ofete, and I work at Amber Health Africa in a country office as a technical advisor for the necrotropical diseases. So it is important that we understand what snake bite is for a start. Snake bite and venomine is different from snake bite. Whereas snake bite occurs when there is a bite from a snake, snake bite and venomine is a result of the injection of venom into the system, or rather the, the victim. And it can either occur through bite or spit into the eyes. And this has been listed as a public health concern of the poor tropical diseases, which results when a, snake, when a venomous snake introduces lethal toxins to the victims. Globally, approximately 5 million snake bites are reported annually. And of the bites, those which end up to envenomation are approximated to be 1.8 of the 5 million, 1.8 million. And of the 1.8 million, that is where we get the devastating effects of mobility, mobilities and mortality, sorry. And it is approximated that we have 400,000 mobilities and 94,000 case fatalities. Just a snippet from Guterres' 2017 paper, you see that um, Asia is the leading continent with regards to the burden of snake bite, followed by Africa. And Nigeria, which is the interest for this particular general club presentation, lies within Africa in the western part. So, why mathematical modeling? What is it that are the challenges? What is it that are the challenges that are facing snake bites that actually necessitate mathematical modeling as a tool to improve the situation or other understanding? One, there's limited data and statistics in common policies, limited studies have been done on snake bites. And those that have been done are majorly conducted at health facility. Yet, with regards to snake bites, it has been reported that majority of the victims tend not to seek hospital care. So what does that mean? We are in the estimate because we are using health facility data by failing to capture and report. So we just need to report to the facility. And these people tend to seek either traditional treatment or conservative, we are referred to as no treatment at all. There's limited information on the interplay between snake bites and human factors as well. And this is where now the strength of compartmental rather dynamic modeling lies. These are the research questions that we want to answer today or rather discuss. How then can mathematical modeling be applied to improve the understanding of snake bite dynamics and what are the impacts of public health awareness and early access to treatment as strategies for controlling snake bite in synthesis and outcomes? So what approach did Abdullah and his team use? So this is a deterministic SIRS model. SIRS because post-recovery, individuals were allowed to go back to the susceptible compartment. And the study area was not to, not east of Nigeria, just six states. Then of interest to mathematical modeling are the parameters that will be used to calibrate the model. And here you're seeing that actually a big number or other proportion of parameters are from actual data. And this actual data was from this hospital in Gombe State. And it was from the month of uh, January 2019 to September 2020, included the number of uh, snake bite and venom individuals, those who received early treatment, those who received late treatment with antivenom, and those who suffered reaction Due to, due to late treatment, those who suffered antivenom reaction due to early treatment, and individuals who recovered without or with disabilities, as well as the death. 
So other parameters that the team could not get from the data were then estimated using the square method or Markov chain Monte Carlo technique. The software that was used for this particular work was MATLAB, and we had simulations for intervention, and it involved three strategies. Number one, what if we institute public health interventions? Number two, what if we institute early access to antivenom as a way of improving health seeking behavior? Number three, what if we combine and identify optimal control? What will be the result of these three interventions? That we shall see from the next slide. So uh, the model formulation, so the entire population of humans at a particular time point, time point T, was divided into nine mutually exclusive compartments. And these are the compartments. Either the unaware susceptible population, they are not aware in terms of public health awareness, sensitization, and awareness creation. And the aware population that is susceptible. So we also have the, the envenom population denoted by IT. Sorry, I'm struggling to move my cursor. And those who receive early treatments from the envenom, those who receive late treatment from the envenom. Those who, uh, those who suffer advanced reaction from antivenom being administered at early stage, and those who suffer advanced reaction when that venom has been administered late or other past the recommended time. Individuals who recover with disability and individuals who recover without disability. And what are the assumptions that hold for this model or other help for that model? Snake bite victims who receive antivenom with 24 hours of bite is considered to be early treatment, whereas administered antivenom administered post 24 hours is regarded as late. And early treatment is not associated with death and disability. And this is important in terms of the number that you're going to get out of the model. And recovered individuals are allowed to move into the society goal. And this denotes the justification for the SIRS model. So these were the parameter values. We had the recruitment uh, rate of unaware susceptible individuals denoted by lambda. We had the uh, population growth rate of snakes. We had the mu natural mortality uh, rates of both the snake and the humans. Beta and venomation rate, epsilon, the rate of public health awareness, which is binary, whether zero we know it's no, 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 no public health awareness and want to know the public health awareness. Peter, efficacy of public health awareness campaign is the rate at which make by individuals receive treatment with antivenom, and then proportion of individuals receiving early treatment with antivenom. And then we have the delta denoting snake bite induced uh, death rate in the respective compartments, alpha, rate at which individuals receiving treatment with antivenom suffer advanced reaction in early or other late compartments, treatment compartments. <clears throat> and then we have the gamma, recovery rate without disability. And then we have, uh, we have the, the sigma, recovery rate with disability. And then we have the rho, proportion of individuals who recovered with disabilities. And then we have the phi, which denotes the transition rate of individuals in the recovery with disability and without disability compartments back to the aware compartment. And finally, the carrying capacity of snake. So let's see the model diagram uh, with those uh, respective compartments. So we had a total of 10 compartments, uh, nine for the humans and uh, one for the snake. And it's expected that we'll have 10 grouping equations. So as you can see here, uh, the, the, the transition from uh, susceptible unaware can go either to susceptible aware after receiving the intervention in this case public health awareness or rather after interaction with snake here denoted by the logistic growth curve model uh, where susceptible unaware can interact with the snake to get the envenom and here basically is borrowing from the low, low, uh, large mass action sorry so we are the outcome is a result of the interaction between the numbers here and the numbers of snakes. And therefore, after being uh, envenomed, it can come from this or this compartment. And
an individual can transition to the early compartment when they receive treatment, rather they get their facility within 24 hours or late when it's past 24 hours. So at the early, one of the assumptions that we have is that there is no disability or death. So it's only recovery without disability. Or when they, when they reach their facility early and they get antivenom, and they get antivenom, they can get reaction when they get antivenom early. So this is called early advanced, advanced uh, reaction due to early antivenom. The same can apply when you administer antivenom uh, when you get to the hospital facility late. And here you can recover without disability or recover with disability. And we can have death from someone who is uh, in venom before reaching to the facility or reaching to the facility late or adverse reaction due to late administration of antivenom. And then uh, following recovery, the disability, someone can transition back to the susceptible. And if you did not receive the public health awareness, then if you suffer a second uh, bite, you'll suffer from the susceptible aware class. So uh, I just thought I should take us through the compartments instead of uh, going through the equations, then it could be easier to comprehend. And we have uh, initial conditions here where we are saying that uh, the susceptible are unaware, such that uh, number greater than zero, and the aware can start uh, greater than or equal to zero. The same applies to uh, the envenoms, and those who receive early treatment, and so on and so forth. So what results are we seeing from, uh, did the study find out, or rather, did we get from the study? So it'll allow me to toggle between uh, the paper and here because there's so much of duplication for me to get uh, the results from the presentation. So allow me to share my screen, my first screen, and I will toggle. So let me know if you can see my Zotero. Yes, we can see that. Thank you. So parameter values. So the estimated parameter values, uh, then they provided us with validity results of the parameter values based on potential, potential scale reduction factor. And uh, the justification is, uh, or rather the, the check is that uh, if the potential scale reduction factor is some, something close to one, then the parameter value is considered to be valid with regards to its uh, its uh, sensitivity. So as you can see from this paper, all the parameter values were more or less close to one, rather equal to one. So comparison between estimated values by the model and the real uh, reported monthly data. So that was another output that we got from the paper. And uh, this is from, uh, let me check, figure three. So this is, uh, I believe, figure three, yes. So they decided to plot simulated data vis-a-vis -vis the reported data. And as you can see, the simulated data agrees to the reported data. So that means that actually parameter values that obtained were actually uh, accurate, for lack of a better term. So that then uh, the simulated data agrees to the, to the reported data. And this uh, holds for simulating snake bite and venoming. All the compartments, uh, number of early treatments, as you can see, this was the late treatment, this was the advanced reaction due to early treatment, advanced reaction due to late treatment, and recovery without disability. Had a bit of mismatch, but then the values were aligning to the model curves. So what other results are we seeing? So we want to see now the model results from individual compartments. So I actually got that from uh, the same, same, same figure, because actually they, were, they, they had to plot first the simulated data that came out of the SRIS model, and uh, first they were rather categorized by the individual compartments, and then uh, they actually overlaid the graph with the reported data from the health facility. So now this paper had two interventions, public health awareness, and early access to antivenom. So for the public health uh, awareness, it was grouped into three categories or other strategies. 
low level awareness, moderate level awareness, 10, 50, and 90% as high level awareness. And what indicators were used to measure the, the, the impact of public health awareness was basically the number of snake bite cases, the number of deaths, and the averted people with disabilities. So this is snake bite envenomation. So we also see, we see that there's an increase in public health awareness. An increase in public health awareness increases the number of snake bite averted deaths. And we also see this with regards to the numerical uh, assessment of impact to early treatment. So these are the results. I just minimize it a little bit. Um, okay. So you see that uh, this is strategy one. So these are the strategy public health awareness only, uh, treatment only, and C was combination of A and B. So when we have public health awareness only, you see that the stimulation period was 12 months. Uh, the graph is calibrated in terms of uh, time, time steps a month. And then we have the numbers to the y-axis. So number of snake induced deaths in public health awareness only at the end of stimulation period, we have more or less slightly about 50. But then early access to antivenom, we have close to 100. And if we combine the two interventions, so then we get an optimal control that averts the highest number of snake bite induced deaths to around uh, around uh, 35 or thereabouts. Yeah. So I actually just based my presentation on that because because uh, I'm not uh, well conversant with the economic aspect, having been introduced to, to mathematics called modeling recently. I didn't want to buy it more than I could chew. But yeah, what conclusions are we getting uh, from this paper? The assessment of public health awareness of the poor population revealed that control strategies are significant in controlling disease in terms of abating the number of snake bite and venomation cases rather than venom cases, death and disability in the community. If at least 50% of snake bite and venom patients receive early anti venom, treatment, more than 900 cases of death would be averted. And this is important because the WHO strategy with regards to reducing the snake bite uh, burden below the public health, uh, below the, the below public health uh, threshold uh, by 2030 is to reduce rather half the burden by 2030. The implementation of control strategies is either separately or in combination. Of control strategies either separately or in combination will help in reducing the number of deaths in the community. However. The combination of the two strategies, strategies averts more than 7,000 deaths and 169,000 daily adjusted live years in the population. Thank you. That's it from me. Thank you from myself and the beautiful performance. Thank you very much.